So here's example two. Determine whether a linear function intersects with, the, with a quadratic function. So here's our two functions, y equals negative x minus 2 and y equals negative 2x squared plus x minus 3. So we have two different functions, one linear, one quadratic. We just need to figure out if they intersect. It doesn't say where they intersect, just if they intersect. And here's the greatest thing that we know based on points of inter or sorry, based on using the quadratic formula. We know that we're going to set these two things equal to each other. So just like we did before to find points of intersection, I'm going to set equation 1 equal to equation 2. So negative x minus 2 is going to equal negative 2x squared plus x minus 3. And again, we'll move everything over to the left-hand side. So we'll still have this negative 2x squared move over, so it'll become positive 2x squared. This negative x stays there and this x moves over and becomes negative. This negative 2 stays, and this negative 3 moves over but becomes positive. And so collecting like terms here, I have 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. So here's my um, two equations uh, set equal to each other. So basically I'm using substitution. Now how can I tell based on looking at this if there's going to be two points of intersection one point of intersection, or no points of intersection. Think about back in your notes from this, this, uh, this unit on how we were able to just tell. If you thought that we could just use the discriminant, you'd be correct. So let's just use the discriminant. Remember the discriminant discriminant, yes. We can just call it capital D, let's say is equal to b squared minus 4ac. It's the part underneath the square root in the quadratic formula. And we saw that when the discriminant is equal to uh, 0, we would have one solution. If the discriminant was greater than 0, we would have two solutions. Or if the discriminant was less than 0, that means we'd have a negative number underneath the square root, which would give us no solutions. So in our equation 2x squared minus 2x plus 1, let's look at what b squared minus 4ac would equal. So our b value is negative 2, so this would be negative 2, all squared, minus 4, times our a value up here is 2, and our c value up there is 1. We can do some quick math here. Negative 2 squared is 4, and then 4 times 2 times 1. Well, 4 times 2 is 8, times 1 is still 8, so minus 8. Well, 4 minus 8 is negative 4. So if our discriminant is negative, remember, that means no solutions. There. That was easy. And I didn't need to go into the quadratic formula to be able to figure that out. I was able to just use the discriminant. But your first step needs to be to set the two equations equal to each other and move everything over to the left-hand side. Then you can use the discriminant to determine how many, or if, the two things even intersect. Okay, let's look at one more example. Here's the last example we're going to look at. If a line with slope 4 has only one point of intersection with the quadratic function, and here's our quadratic function here, it's given in function notation, which we're going to talk a little bit about in starting in unit 3. But you can just assume that this is the same thing as saying y equals so y equals 1 half x squared plus 2x minus 8. So that's the quadratic equation. Uh, what is the y-intercept of that line? And it says model your linear equation using slope y-intercept form. OK, so we're only given a quadratic fo function in this question. We aren't given a linear equation. But we are given a clue as to what the linear equation looks like. We're told that the slope is 4. And the question's asking, what is the y-intercept? Okay, so we can remember back to grade 9 and grade 10. Remember, we can write a linear equation in slope y-intercept form where we have y equals mx plus b. m represents the slope, and b represents the y-intercept. Okay, well, this is perfect. We're told the slope is 4. 
So we know that our equation is going to be y equals slope of 4, so 4x, and I don't know I'm the y-intercept, which is what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to keep that as a plus, and I'm going to change the letter to k, only because uh, you'll see later, when if we have to use the quadratic formula, we use the letters a, b, and c in the quadratic formula, so I don't want to get as confused. So I'm just going to change the letter b to k. It doesn't matter, they both represent numbers. So just like we did before, we're going to set the two equations equal to each other because we're trying to find points of intersection. So let's do that. I'm going to set half x plus 2x minus 8. So half x, x squared, sorry, plus 2x minus 8 equal to my linear equation 4x plus k. Let's not be too afraid that there's a k in here. We can still work this out. And again, move everything over to the left-hand side. So half x squared plus 2x. Move the 4x over so it becomes negative 4x. Then we're going to have a negative 8. And then this k moves over and it becomes negative as well. So half x squared plus 2x minus 4x minus 8 minus k. These two terms here we can collect because they're like terms. So we're just left with half x squared positive 2x minus 4x is negative 2x, and then negative 8 minus k. Okay, so now we've gotten our, basically our three terms, and it's hard to see this, but the x squared is one term, the x or the negative 2x, that's the second term, and this minus 8 minus k, well because k is just some random number, we know that minus 8 minus k, this will just end up being, again, a number, a number by itself. So before we move on, let's just consider the fact that this is together. We're going to keep this as one term going on in our thinking, because if I'm using the quadratic formula from here on out, I know that the half, that's my a value, the negative 2, that's my b value, and now my c value is always just the number by itself. Well, minus 8 minus k, that is going to be my c value. It's the number by itself. We just don't know yet what k is. We're going to have to solve for that. So let's, let me write these out again. So a is equal to half. Maybe we can change this to a decimal just to help us out b is equal to negative 2, and c is equal to negative 8 minus k. We could use the quadratic formula to help us, but we're given one other clue here in this question. Can you see it? Yeah, it's right here. We're told that a line with slope 4 only has one point of intersection with the quadratic function. Well, one point of intersection, that tells us that this line is tangent to the quadratic. But what else does it tell us when we write it in, so we want to use the quadratic formula? Well, we know that the discriminant has to equal what? We know the discriminant needs to equal zero. Right? With only one point of intersection, the discriminant has to equal 0. Or, in other words, b squared minus 4ac has to equal 0. So we can use this to help us out. If I know that b squared minus 4ac equals 0, let's plug in our values for a, b, and c, and then try to solve for k. Because in the end, that's what we want, right? We want the y-intercept of our linear equation, or basically the k value. So let's sub them in and solve for k. So b squared minus 4ac, b is negative 2. So we're going to have negative 2 all squared minus 4 times a. a is half times c. c is negative 8 minus k. We're going to have to do a little bit of uh, algebra here. We know all this equals 0. Negative 2 squared, that's 4. Negative 4 times half, well, half of 4 is 2, so this becomes negative 2 times negative 8 minus k. And so this negative 2, it's going to have to expand or distribute itself 
into the bracket before I can operate it with this 4. Remember, bed mass says I need to multiply before I can add or subtract. Don't make that mistake. So let's multiply this negative 2 into the bracket. So the 4 stays here for now. Negative 2 times negative 8 is positive 16. And then negative 2 times negative k, well that's positive 2k. And we know that equals 0. Okay, so looking at this, we want to isolate for k, so let's move these two numbers over to the other side. 4 plus 16, that's 20, and when I move it over it becomes negative. So 2k is going to equal negative 20, and look at this, k, when I divide out the 2, equals negative 10. So, looks like we have it. The k value in this question is negative 10, or other words, our linear equation looks like this. y equals mx plus b, or 4x, and then the k value is negative 10. So this, so y equals 4x minus 10 is the linear equation. Thus, the y-intercept is negative 10. Boo yeah. So that concludes our lesson on linear quadratic functions, or I guess systems of linear quadratic functions. Uh, if you need to go over anything, just rewind the video and watch it again. Otherwise, good luck with your homework, and be prepared for your test coming up later this week.